Hello again, and welcome to Whitney with the Wrangler at Dick Powell's Leadership Corner, brought to you by Earth, Wind, Fire, Water, Training, and Development, where our passion is building leaders of today and tomorrow. Leaders, today we're going to look at something that I believe that is really relevant to us. And before we get started, I need to say this is that the information on today's program was gathered from many different places and many different people. So if you hear yourself in the conversation today, please remember, it is not all about you. What we're going to look today at is something I call reality overload. Now, <clears throat> as leaders, we always seem to be in the thick of things and at the forefront, and sometimes the overload just gets too much. And we say, well, I quit. I'm going away. I'm not going to do this anymore. And, and you know, you just can't do that. So, how are some things, or what are some things, would be a better question. What are some things that we can do to help ourselves, well, make sure that we don't get overloaded to a point where we're at a collapse situation? And believe me, I have seen this happen more than once. So kind of listen up and, and let's, let's look at these kind of opportunities that we can do for ourselves. The first of all is I'm going to encourage you to, when you are feeling this, to find some place or some time to just quiet your mind. Now, that works for many different people in many different ways. Some is sitting in a chair where it's really quiet. Some it's, you know, well, just reading a book or, or just getting away from the situation that you're in at the moment. For me, I like to go camping or, or out in the woods because that's where my mind gets really, I can get level again. But you're going to need to find your own quieting place where you can quiet all those struggles in your mind, all the things that are going on, and, you know, get down to realization like we did here. I've, I, well, quite frankly, I've been having a lot of problems with, with nails in my, my tires. And I've just had to realize this, they're just tires. You know? So moving on, quiet your mind. Find either the place or the activity that does it for you and practice it on a, on a, on a really regular basis. And the reason I'm, I'm encouraging that is, is that if you practice this on a regular basis where you clear your mind and you get to a quiet situation, if you practice it on a regular basis, it won't come to this reality overload. Now, I will say this next one might be a little harder to do. You see, when reality starts to overload and come and just start to, well, almost smother you, well, I'm going to re re advise you or I'm going to encourage you to remove all the negative things and people out of your life. I'm going to tell you what. People oftentimes kid me because I'm usually smiling or laughing or, or, or you know telling a story or doing something. But I have to tell you that I have found that other people enjoy being around other people who are positive, who have that joy. It's okay. But if there are people around you who are negative, bringing you down, they're, they're moving you in the wrong direction, Maybe you're going to need to do an evaluation and say, boy, I just really need to leave them behind. The other is the negative things that are happening to you. You know, the actions. Well, you know what I'm saying. Negative things. Get stuck in traffic. Get charged the wrong amount. Have someone say something that is untrue about you. All those kind of things are negative. Leave them behind. I'm not saying forget them because you want to take and know who and where and what what's happening. You want to be aware. You want to be intentionally aware. 
And that's why I encourage you to do this intentional awareness of the negativity around you and remove it. I, I will tell you that sometimes is easier said than done, so I'm, I'm going to leave it go there for a moment. When reality starts to overload and your dreams seem to be slipping away, hopefully in that quiet time that you have already arranged, you've, you've started to dream again or continue. And that is a good thing. Those are what motivates us to get up every morning and go to work or go get involved with other people. It's that dream. What, what are we working towards? But I have found that the number one thing that helps me in that, quite frankly, was that quiet time. The time to recharge and, and kind of get back on level. Now, so many times I hear people tell me that they've, they've had to either put their dreams aside, which is what are you willing to do to get to where you want to go, but they didn't forget them, or they've just forgotten them altogether. You know what? Don't forget your dreams. They mean something. In your subconscious, they're, they're what talking to you and telling you that's what you should be doing. So if you can't do it right now, do one little thing towards it. And you can plan that. You can get that strategy oftentimes in that quiet time. Now the next one I find really challenging sometimes because of my age and stage and things in my life. Quite frankly, when things get overloaded around here, I find a physical activity. Now I'm a kind of guy, I've worked with my hands my whole life, so working out in the wood shop really works for me, or taking a walk in the woods, or, or just going outside in the backyard and tending to the garden. Something physical, where your, your mind is moving on a different plane. Sometimes we'll, we'll take all those problems and situations and put them in order for you. That's what I'm encouraging you to do, to realize, to be intentionally realization of when this reality overload is happening to you. And try to make sure it doesn't overload so you explode. Physical activity is a good one. You know, just find something that works for you. One of my buddies, he's a runner. He, you know, he gets overloaded, he goes out for a run. Well, my old knees just don't do that anymore. So I had to find something else. You need to find what works for you. Okay? Find out what works for you. Oh, man. This next one, again, it's not all that easy. But I want you to evaluate the things you cannot change and let them go. There's just things in life that we just have no, no real control over. Sometimes it's at our job site. Sometimes it's at a, a nonprofit where we're, we're volunteering. Sometimes it's at our home situation. If it really comes down to that, you cannot change it. You cannot make things better. You, you just have to, well, accept the reality of it. You've got a choice. You can either accept it, move on, or you can move out. I have found in my own life that there are some things that if I let go of, that down the road they seem to take care of themselves. I quit the worrying and I quit the fretting and I, I quit the moaning and groaning and all of a sudden things just seem to work out. But if I spend that time really stuck in that world without saying to myself, let's evaluate this. Where am I? Where do I want to go? How is this happening? And I really spend some time doing it. And that's why on this evaluation piece, I encourage you to keep that journal. Journaling really will help you always keep your evaluations on a level basis. Because when you go back and read them, a lot of times you'll say, boy, I must have been angry or I must have been upset. That's really not the way I feel. 
You see, things do change. Now, this next one here, I want to encourage you when things are really starting to overload. I want you to find the people who have been helping you, who have been stood beside you and, and been there and say just these two words. Thank you. Thank you for being in there. Thank you for stay, stay in this course. You know, just thanks for being my friend. Or thanks for working with me. You know, those two words, thank you, really can take the reality overload and just wipe it away very, very quickly. It amazed me when I started doing this more often, and I really had to, when I started doing it, because it was unnatural for me. I just thought everybody knew I was thankful for them to be around. But I realized I needed to voice that. And it seemed to, to remove some of this reality overload from my shoulders. And the more I did it, the more not only I enjoyed it, but I saw on their faces the joy that came from just saying, hey, thanks for being there for me. I appreciate it. Hmm. This next one, I'm going to say, embrace long-term thinking. You know, so many times we we kind of get into the short-term thought process. You know, I need it now. And, and, and then we don't do the evaluation, is this a need or a want? And we don't oftentimes say no. And that's the really where we get overloaded because all of a sudden it's really comparing ourselves with other folks. And one of the best things I ever learned in my, well, whole life as I learned as a young young boy actually in Cub Scouts and there was a thing called do your best and what it meant was do my best not somebody else's and comparing myself with someone else's best wasn't gonna make my best and so you know this whole thing of really embracing this piece of saying thank you started to make sense Let's look at this next one. A way to make sure that you conquer reality overload. I want you or I encourage you to focus on what activities bring you joy into your life. What are those activities? Are they having a date night with your significant other or are they, you know, going to the movies? Are they going out to dinner or are they, you know, just sitting at home watching a TV or what is it? Riding bicycles, going camping, you know, what is it? Uh, working with, I, I, I just can't, I, I can name you all the things that are make, bring joy to me, but you need to seek out joy for yourself. And I'm going to give you a little hint here. If you're going to seek joy on the terms of the person sitting next to you, I'm sorry, but that's not going to work very well. You need to find your personal joy and focus on those activities. I have found over and over that when folks focus on their activities they enjoy, not only does their corporate life seem to blossom, but their personal life seems to blossom. So that again, that would remove, you know, this reality overload. Isn't that just the fantastic great? So we're going to do this long-term thinking. We're going to get rid of the short-term nessus. You know, I've got to have it now. Hmm. Learn something new daily. I'll tell you what. I'm going to encourage you, again, to be an ongoing, continuous learner. We have found over and over that when folks take on a new opportunity that changes the way they think and the way they act and all the different parts and pieces, it changes their overload situation. They've got something new and exciting. Now, I'm not going to say look at it as a drudgery, but 
Find something that is, is new and exciting that you want to give a try. Running these TV and radio shows, I'm going to tell you what, this is brand new and I've had to learn a whole lot. But it comes down to the whole factor, <laughs> quite honest with you. It comes down to the factor of what are you willing to do? You see, taking action for ourselves, looking out for ourselves, I, I just can't encourage that enough. I believe that when we get overloaded, we have spent our time worrying or being involved with some other folks, the situation, whether it be corporate or individual. So understand we need to take care of ourselves. Well, first, because you can't take care of anybody else unless you take care of yourself first. So learn something new daily. You know, I, I tell you, I just, I, I love picking up these new magazines that they have around me of, of all these new things that you can do. And what, we've, what we're doing now is we're taking a little side trip on Wednesdays to someplace local that we've never been before. Do something new. Do something different. Release that anxiety of this reality overload. Now, this number, a last one on here that uh, Robin and I put together, what we have found is this. We all need positive reinforcement. And that doesn't matter what age you are or what stage you're in. Robin and I have found that over and over, all of us need positive reinforcement. Now, what we are doing here and what we're encouraging for those who work with us is to find positive reinforcement statements for yourself and post them places. Put them on your, on your day runner. My, mine's written right at the top over here. You know, I mean, what, what is it that you can look at all the time and your, and your mind immediately goes to that positive reinforcement. I can, I will, I did. <laughs> you know, those are pretty good right off the bat. The thing is, is this. Don't allow yourself to get caught up in the reality overload situation. Conquer it. Conquer this, this reality overload in your life. Help other people see that there's a better way. Help them understand that there, there's some things you can do to help conquer this, this overload in your life. I was talking to a young mother just the other day at, after church. She was just overloaded. Two little people. Her husband and her both work. They're doing the best they can to, to make it through all the struggles of life to work both you know both working come home do laundry do the make the meals he's, he's trying to take care of the house and the cars and and all those kind of things and still take time with the children their one child needs a little extra help in school so that again that's an evening evening opportunity and, and, you know, when she was explained to me, she almost said, that's a chore. But her husband's better at it than she is because he's got a better temperament for patience. And so they've really kind of split it up. But when I was asked her, I said, do you ever just go for a walk? Do you and your husband ever just really take some time together? Do you ever take some time for yourself? And when she told me she hadn't taken time for herself since the first baby was born, I, I, I really encouraged her and, and kind of took her over to talk to my wife. We found out the reality overload of having a family. Every mother needs some time away <laughs> from, from little people. And, you know, the same goes for dads. I think that dads get, get overloaded just as well as moms. The point of the matter is, is when I shared this list with that couple, they went down, they looked it over, and it was funny because the, the, they kind of snatched it back and forth between themselves when Robin and I were talking to them. And the first thing that was on the list was take time to quiet your mind. And the, the, the gentleman said that his mind runs so fast, even when he lays down to go to sleep, his mind is running. 
So he's trying to find a way to quiet his mind, a place where he can, he can take it. So I talked to him a little while later, a couple weeks, and he told me this. He said this. Now he's reading a book before he goes to bed. And he's finding that quiets his mind, his, his mind so he can sleep and get good sleep. That's an important piece of this reality overload. Good sleep. It's amazing that when we take care of our brain, we take care of our body, well, our overload seems to go down. So the first one was take time to quiet your mind. The second was remove all or as many negative people and things from your life. The next was choose to dream. Choose to dream. And I'm going to encourage you to write them down. Not a bucket list that I'm going to check off before I'm off this, you know, eternal coal. Just, I, I'm, I'm going, these are things that excite me. Things maybe I want to do. Maybe I want to achieve. Maybe I want to invent. Maybe, whatever they are. Whatever those dreams are. Write them down. Here's what I've learned. When I've written down my dreams, and sometimes I've, I've really taken the courage to share them with other people. There's been people who have helped me achieve those dreams. They just didn't know that that's what I was trying to do before I shared that with them. And they were all excited that I'd, I'd actually taken the courage to do so. So I'm going to encourage you to do that yourself. Choose to dream. Do something physical. Whether it's going to the gym or it's taking a walk, riding your bike, working in the wood shop, pulling weeds, you know, raking the yard, mowing the grass, whatever it is, find something physical where your hands and body are moving. Believe me, once that starts to happen, your mind just kind of gets rid of all those other things and lets you concentrate and focus where you're at. You're in the moment and not in the big picture. Just for a little while, it's okay. You can take time for yourself. Do something physical. Evaluate the things you cannot change. Then do your best to let them go. Learn from them. Use them as learning tools and move on. I'm not saying you have to forget them. I'm not saying you have to run them over. I'm just saying that take time to evaluate where you're at in that scheme of things. And sometimes they'll take care of themselves. Say thank you to those who support you and your dreams. This is a fantastic point. Many years I went through my life, I kind of never said thank you to all those people who helped me get to where I was going. You know, I was just kind of willy-nilly it through there. The thing is, is those people really deserved my thanks. Some a lot more than others, but all everyone deserved the thank you for helping me help myself get to where I dreamed about going. The next one is this. Focus on what activities bring you joy into your life. What are those activities? They could be small. could be just reading a book. It could be watching that special television program. It it could be knitting or ironing. (laughs) My wife loves to iron, so that's that's her time. You have to find what brings you joy. And then do it. (laughs) I think sometimes that's the hardest part is actually kind of taking the action on these things and doing them. And sometimes that's some is the hardest part, but you can, and you will. And and I know you will do it. Embrace long-term thinking. Think down the road. What is my legacy? Where do I really want to go? What do I really want to accomplish? What, what is it? And with that long-term thinking, you put together that those little pieces of strategy. What do I need to do daily to get to where I want to go? You see, that's what really helps that piece. 
if I just do one little thing every day, by golly, sooner or later I'll get her done. That makes a pretty happy thing. Now, uh, give up short-term qualifications here. Short, oh, it says give up short-term gratification. Excuse me. Short-term gratification really stems from a not answering the question, is it a want or a need? You see, so many people tell me, well, you know, I only have a certain amount of money, so I take that because I deserve it. I bought that because I deserved it. Is that still a want or a need? You need to really make that decision. You see, a want is I deserve it. A need is my family's going hungry, so I need to buy the food. We need to have, you know, heat and a roof over our head. We need to have a decent vehicle to take and go to work in. A want is putting those fancy tires and rims on that vehicle. You see, one is a want and one is a need, and that will always take precedent. Learn something new daily. If you heard nothing else that I have talked about today, if I can encourage you to have some long-term thinking and to learn something new daily, well, I'll tell you what, I'll feel like a winner. The reason is, is what we see over and over that many don't do that. I was talking to a young fellow just the other day who had two or three college degrees, and I asked him what book he was reading right now, and he said, I don't read anymore. I read all I was going to read when I was in college. I'm not doing it anymore. I said, how are you staying up on top of, of, your, of your career and your profession? He said, not my job. Now, that's a worry to me, just so you know. Learn something new daily. You're going to find it's not only going to help you, but it'll help those around you, and it will stimulate your mind to concentrate or focus on those dreams. You'll be surprised how learning something new makes those dreams come true. And use positive reinforcements. You know, whether you're, you're, you're finding those quotes on the, on the internet and you're, you're writing them down, you're posting them, you found a quote in a book, you, wherever it is, write them down, post them up, keep them near. You know, I have a friend who has a, on his smartphone every day a new quote comes up of a pause, something positive reinforcement for the day. Well, I'm not a real tech person, so it's not on my phone. The thing is I'm trying to explain to you is, is everybody has a different way of finding those positive reinforcements, and I'm going to encourage you to use them. And I hope you've had an enjoyable time listening and watching today that you have gathered a, a nugget of wisdom that you can put into your own life. Here at Earthwind Firewater Training Development, we really do our best to help others help themselves get to where they want to go. That's our whole mission. And we do it by speaking on stage and here on TV and radio. We do it by having personal interaction with folks. We also do it by doing keynote speeches and and all sorts of other things that we can bring to your location. So remember that you're never alone in this leadership and accountability world. You always have Robin and myself here at Earthwind Firewater Training and Development. Well, on behalf of myself, Dick Powell, and the whole Leadership Corner team, I want to say thank you for being a part of today's program. My hope and dream is that you have gathered a nugget of wisdom and guidance that will help you become a better leader. It will help you conquer reality overload. Now, if you have any questions or comments on today's program, please don't hesitate. Give me a call. 727-422-1833. 727-422-1833. Go to the website. Send me an email. Dick at EWFW.org. Dick at EWFW.org. Go to the website, take a look around, and hey, you never know what, there's a button there you can take and talk to me too. And you never know, if you can't tell, you might want to buy one of my books there. So that's www.ewfw.org. And when you're ready to take and have me come and do a keynote speech or a leadership seminar, 
by golly, get on that phone or send me an email and let's get it on the books quickly. Till next time, DW the Wrangler, ride hard, ride fast.